All right, so we've talked about what a mole is, the fact that it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, which could be atoms, could be molecules, whatever you're trying to measure. But we don't usually measure things in how many particles we have. We don't really have tools for that. We do have tools, though, to measure mass. All right, so a lot of times what you'll end up doing is if you're running an experiment, you'll know how many grams of a chemical you have to start with, and then we'll convert that to moles. So I'm going to teach you how to do that here. All right, so to do this, you are going to need a periodic table. So go ahead, if you still have that one from Unit 3 that we've labeled, pull that guy out. Otherwise, I will um, include a link in the classroom or on the recording page to direct you towards one. But the numbers on the periodic table, all right, if you recall the non-decimal number, the one that's always a whole number, that's your atomic number. We're going to ignore that one for now. We want to focus on that decimal number, that mass number, because that mass number is the grams of that atom in one mole or the mass of that atom when you have one mole of it. All right, so if you, and just for ease of, you know, adding things up and things like that, I'm going to say just round all of these numbers to whole numbers if they aren't already. So like depending on your periodic table, it might say that oxygen is 15.999. Just call it 16 grams in one mole of oxygen. Carbon, we'll say, is 12. I know chlorine, I think, is 35.45, so I'm just rounding that down to 35. All right, so just look, you know, take those decimal masses and round them to your nearest whole number when doing this. So, super easy. You just look these up off your periodic table. Now, if you are dealing with a chemical formula that has multiple atoms in it, all right, you're just going to take the molar mass of each individual atom and add them all together, combine them, all right? So for example, carbon dioxide. Based on our formula, we've got CO2. There's no number following the C, so there's just one carbon. And then the two following the oxygen tells us that there's two oxygens. So I'm going to take the mass of carbon and add it to the mass of oxygen twice. So 12 plus 16 plus 16, all right? So when you are doing this with any sort of formula type thing, you're going to just, you know, look up the mass of each atom and then include it the number of times that atom is present. All right. So for example, ammonia. All right. Molar mass of ammonia nitrogen, if you look it up, should be 14.0 something. So I'm just going to round that to 14. And then hydrogen would round to 1. All right. So I, there's one nitrogen in this formula, but there are three hydrogens. So I've got a total molar mass of 17 grams. All right. Um, let's see, FeOH3, just to get a little bit more complicated here. So I'm going to look up iron, oxygen, and hydrogen. I know hydrogen is 1. I know oxygen is 16. And iron... If I remember correctly, is 56. All right. Now, based on my formula, I have one iron. All right. I've got three oxygens and hydrogens because that three is on the outside. So it's going to be 56 plus 16 three times plus one three times. And then I add those all together. Um, which should end up being 107, I think. Yeah. 107 grams. Okay. So, at this point, I'm going to say pause the video, try a few of these, see if you get them right. Um, I'm not going to do every single one, but especially ones where I can just like real quick let you know what the right answer is. I will throw those on there. Um, but 
pause it, try a couple, see if you get these right. So just to take a complicated one and do it for you, the calcium one, calcium nitrate. So we're gonna have 40 for the one calcium plus two times one nitrogen. So we're gonna have 14 in there twice. And then two times three oxygens is gonna be six oxygens. All right, so what I'm gonna do just to save myself some writing, I'm gonna do 16 times six. All right, so the mass of oxygen is six times. And then if I add all that up. I think that's right, 16 times six is 28. 164 grams. All right. Some other ones. This should be 103. This should be 18. This should be 56. This should be 66. All right, so just a few, like these other ones where it's just the numbers, make sure you are able to get to those numbers. Um, let's see, I'll do one more. Let's see, magnes, let's do the sodium oxide. So I'm gonna have sodium, I'm gonna call that 23, plus 23, because there's two of them, plus 116 for the oxygen. So that is equal to 62 grams, all right? So this is how you determine the molar mass of a chemical. Now let's use it to convert from mass to moles. So I have this little diagram here. This is something that I was taught when I was in high school. And I thought this made Helping me remember, you know, oh, am I supposed to multiply? Am I supposed to divide? It made it really easy. All right. So call this mole island. And really to get through, to do any sort of conversions, all right, you can be going towards mole island, all right, which I have down here in, with these red arrows. And if you'll notice in red written next to these, if you're converting two moles, you're going to divide by a number. All right. Likewise, if you're going the opposite direction, if you're going from moles to mass, all right, so that's the black information, you're going to multiply by a number. And the number that you multiply is written in green near wherever you're kind of doing this transference. All right, so we are going to focus on moles and mass right here. All right. So the number that you multiply or divide by is this molar mass that we just learned how to determine. All right, so if you're trying to convert grams of carbon dioxide into moles, you're gonna divide by the molar mass of carbon dioxide. If you are trying to determine the mass of a certain number of moles of sodium oxide, you're gonna multiply by the molar mass of sodium oxide. All right, so just to kind of so take a screenshot of this, that way you have it and you can bring it with you to the next slide. I'm gonna do that too. So here's some sample type problems. So if you have five moles of water, how many grams is that? Or vice versa, if you have a certain mass of water, how many moles is that? So real quick, I'm gonna paste My mole island picture, I'm gonna see if I can make this smaller. Oh, let me change, there we go. Just gonna throw him down in the corner here. All right, so the first one, we are going from moles to mass, all right? Because if you look at your kind of dissecting this problem, we know that we have five moles of water, so that's our starting point. And when we want to go to grams, we're going to mass. 
So that means that I am going from moles to mass. Okay, so I'm going to multiply that five moles by the molar mass of water. So water's molar mass is going to be two ones for the mass of two hydrogens plus 16 for the mass of water or 18 grams. All right, so I'm going to take that five moles. I'm going to multiply by 18, which gives me 90 grams of water. All right. Likewise, if I have a mass and I need to turn that into moles, all right, so that's going in this direction. So mass two moles, which means I'm going to divide. All right. I'm going to take that 42 grams. That's our starting point. 42. And I'm going to divide by that molar mass, so 18. So 42 divided by 18 is 2.33 moles of water. All right, so again, some practice for you guys. Pause the video, try a couple of these. I'll do the first one in each column. Um, that way, if you want to try those and make sure you get it right, it's a good idea. But, so let's see, HBr is going to be 1, I'm going to figure out my molar mass first. So I need to figure out how many moles and 34 grams, so this means I'm going to divide, because I'm going 2 grams. So H is 1, Br is... 80. So I'm going to take 34 divided by 80. And that's going to be 0 0.425 moles HBr. And it should say 34. I know that's kind of hard to see. All right, and then on this side, how many grams in 3.2 moles? So I'm starting from the 3.2 moles and I need to go to grams. So that means I need to multiply for this set. All right, so oxygen, O2, is 16 plus 16. All right, because that little 2 is important. So that means my molar mass here is 32. So I'm going to do 3.2 times 32, which equals... 102.4 grams of O2. There you go.